Do you smell the saltiness? That's been Dallas since one of their main rivals won their first Super Bowl. One of their great pastimes is nothing but a memory. This may suck for you guys, but you'll always have SeatGeek. It's an app that you may have heard of before. It scouts all tickets available on the resale market and sorts them to help you make the best selection. Like all good draft boards, it sorts tickets on a 1 to 100 scale and color codes them from red to green. Even get tape on where you'll be sitting during the game. Make the selection by using the code word TREE in the link below to get $20 off of your first purchase. SeatGeek, it'll help you win more than Jerry Jones in the near future. In the meantime, there are players to be drafted and a commissioner to be booed relentlessly. The first pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Baker Mayfield. Wow. The Mad Men did it. The Browns found a way for us to laugh at them again. Defying all logic by not selecting Donald or Rosen, they picked the cocky son of a bitch from Oklahoma. Because they haven't tried doing this exact same thing a few years earlier. No, this is much different, you say. Baker gives a shit about football. His swagger will bring the Browns to relevance again. Even if I have my doubts, Cleveland is either the best or the worst place he could have gone. He'll be backing up Tyrod Taylor before he gets fucked over yet again at the end of the season. Maybe he's a Johnny Football that cares about football. Prove me wrong, Factory of Sadness. The New York Giants select Saquon Barkley. Aw, oh, how cute. The Giants still think they can compete with an aging Eli Manning, massive turnover on defense, and an increasingly cancerous Odell Beckham. They may not have the horsepower to run with the best anymore, but they potentially got themselves a generational talent at a key skill position. Barkley lit up the college world like a Christmas tree, and if the Giants can fix their O-line woes, he should produce in bunches. Congratulations, New York. You have secured yourselves, at minimum, a seven-win season. I hope to God that Barkley doesn't end up like Kajana Carter. I would cry if he did. The New York Jets select Sam Darnold. The butt fumble managed to capitalize off of Cleveland's fixation on cocky quarterbacks from the South to get what could be the guy with the highest upside in the draft. You better hope to God that he doesn't flop like most QBs that come out of USC. Darnold developed a reputation as a turnover machine in the last year, so he'll need some time to season. The Jets gave up a premium haul to the Colts to move up three spots, which is punishment for overachieving and butt-fumbling the tank last season. This is their Hail Mary to save everyone's job in that organization. I think it's time to put this narrative to rest. Please develop. The Cleveland Browns select... Denzel Ward. And Cleveland looks past the obvious choice and potentially one of the deadliest pass rushing duos in football to draft based on need. Even then, was this really the best pick available? What's wrong with Minka Fitzpatrick? It seems to me that they wanted to trade down but couldn't find any reasonable takers, so they reached a little bit for the guy they wanted. Of course, it's Cleveland, so I will sit back and laugh some more at possibly fucking up a golden situation in this draft. The Denver Broncos select. Bradley Chubb. If you transport yourselves over to Denver, you will see resident shit poster That's Good Broncos getting a massive chub over this pick. With him and Von Miller in tow, that pass rush could be deadly. Vance Joseph will find a way to fuck it up just because. I also learned today that Casa Bonita is still open. Impressive. The Indianapolis Colts select. Quentin Nelson. Oh my glorious god, it finally happened. The Colts drafted an offensive lineman. They're choosing to protect their golden goose and Andrew Luck instead of allowing his brain to turn into soup. That's also adding to that savvy trade they made with the Jets for draft capital. I don't know if I'm ready for this forward-thinking glue factory. I'm afraid to step into the light. Heaven help us all. The Buffalo Bills select... Josh Allen. You make all that noise with Rosen still available, yet you picked Allen? The guy with a cannon arm but has massive accuracy issues? It doesn't even matter that he said some really stupid shit in high school. If he can't throw accurately at this level, he will be picked apart. I know you're trying to shave off that whole walking mediocrity moniker, but this one has me scratching my head a bit. With this doubt, he will probably turn into a superstar and lead Buffalo to a Super Bowl. It's just how this works, doesn't it? The Chicago Bears select... Roquan Smith. Ooh, very solid pick that should stabilize that linebacking core. The Bears have shed a lot of vets on the defensive side of the ball, and Smith should make an immediate impact. Just don't waste his career, McCaskies. Pretty please. The San Francisco 49ers select 
Mike McGlinchey. After grumblings of trading down, the Niners buckle up and draft to their blindside tackle to protect their new golden goat in Jimmy Garoppolo. When you're investing that kind of money into a guy, you better give him both the tools and protection to thrive. If McGlinchey pans out, that's a start towards protecting him. Too many times teams allow their star QBs to rot by neglecting their needs. I'm looking at you, Green Bay and Indianapolis. The Arizona Cardinals select Josh Rosen. And a very obvious pairing of team and quarterback has met its match. Josh Rosen was considered by some to be a potential number one pick a few weeks before the draft, so the Cards did what needed to be done to get one of those QBs. That position has been their biggest issue over the past two seasons, so it's needed. Rosen will be able to develop behind Sam Bradford, which means he should be starting for the Cardinals by, let's say, week four. And knowing Arizona's luck, he'll be injured in week six. The Miami Dolphins select Minka Fitzpatrick. The Dolphins continue their self-proclaimed culture change by picking one of the more talented defensive players in the draft in Minka Fitzpatrick. May this pick help you become relevant for the first time since Ace Ventura. Then again, you'll probably sign some more names in free agency that blow up in your face. Gotta love narratives, they never get stale. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Vida Vea. The Bucks desperately needed help on the defensive side of the ball, and after trading down, it was either Derwin James or the defensive tackle known as Vita Vea. They chose the guy who will hopefully eat through offensive lines like he does steaks. Now I'm hungry for some ribeye, and all I can think about is marbling. God damn it. The Washington Redskins select. Incredible news to hear, the Redskins drafted a guy that has the potential to tackle someone. Unfortunately, this franchise will find a way to waste him because Dan Snyder kills everything that he touches. I feel for Darius Geis in this regard as well. May you overcome the horrors of Snyder to have lucrative careers. The New Orleans Saints select... Marcus Davenport. Oh. So New Orleans traded up, giving away their first round pick for next year to pick a project defensive end when their window may close when Breeze retires. Got it. Hopefully he can develop a little faster to form a deadly one-two punch with Cameron Jordan. It's what you need to get over that hub, I think. The Oakland Raiders select Colton Miller. I've been a bit perplexed at what the hell the Raiders have been doing this offseason. It's as if they've been heavily studying a pro football cheat sheet from 2015. Not only bringing in guys like Jordy Nelson and Doug Martin, they also acquired Martavis Bryant, who spent more time causing drama than catching passes last year. If he had problems getting the ball with A.B. and Juju, then have fun with Amari Cooper. He can wind to their new offensive tackle. You'd figure they'd try to address their dumpster fire of a defense, but they must have thought Derek Carr nearly getting his body quartered last year was a bigger concern. Donald Penn's injury last year amplifies this tenfold. The Buffalo Bills select Jermaine Edmonds. Buffalo getting aggressive once again to take a physical freak. That and he's only 19. The upside is tremendous, but he may need more time to achieve his full potential. Come back to me in five years on this one. The Los Angeles Chargers select Derwin James. And one of the better defensive players in this draft falls into the laps of LA's redheaded stepchild, making this pick a no-brainer. Fuck you, Spanos. The Green Bay Packers select Jair Alexander. Did I just see what I think I did? The Packers trading up to draft a player? Aaron Rodgers' injury must have deservedly sent the organization into panic mode. I don't even care if Alexander flops. This move is like Haley's Comet. Occurs once every 70 years. Relish in it. They also picked the name most likely to appear in a Key and Peel sketch in Equinemius St. Brown. Will go perfectly with Haha Clinton Dix. The Dallas Cowboys select Layton Vanderesh. The good news is that you drafted a linebacker with injury concerns and freed yourself from the hell of Des Bryant. The bad news is that Jason Witten chose the cushy ESPN gig over playing another year for you. Way to waste his career, guys. If you're lucky, you'll see him in Canton someday. The Detroit Lions select Frank Regnow. The name of the game for the Lions is the offensive line. They invested heavily in it in this draft in the hopes of building from the interior out. The key to a strong team is in its own line, and I respect teams that realize the value of it. They need pieces to help protect their shrine in Matt Stafford, and maybe develop a modicum of a running game. The Cincinnati Bengals select Billy 
Price. Oh, so now you try and fix that terrible offensive line, Cincy. It doesn't matter since this organization is stagnant and a breeding ground for disease. Keeping Marvin Lewis on when all signs pointed to him needing to leave is proof as such. I'm more surprised they didn't try to draft another wide receiver to convert to cornerback. The Tennessee Titans select Rashawn Evans. Mr. Evans, welcome to one yard short. The team has good upside, but was hampered by terrible coaching. The New Age Titans, trading up to get your services, are banking on you filling a need at middle linebacker. They even want up the Patriots to do so. As an Alabama product, there will be a lot of expectations. Good luck, sir. The New England Patriots select Isaiah Wynn. This is the obvious Nate Solder replacement for the Patriots. This pick was given to them by the reigning champions of the offseason known as the Los Angeles Rams for Brandon Cooks. Cooks never really gelled with Brady and didn't reach his full potential in that offense. He is now the upgrade to Sammy Watkins over there. Father Time catches us all and it may be sneaking up on the path sooner rather than later. The Carolina Panthers select... DJ Moore. One of the more obvious smacks in the face of a draft pick that you will ever see. Carolina needs wide receivers so they don't have to rely on Christian McCaffrey as the main pass option. DJ Moore will hopefully fill this need along with deep threat Torrey Smith. So he has issues with route running. Better get him out of that little tick quickly. The Baltimore Ravens select... Hayden Hurst. Hey, I know this guy. He was a prospect for the Pittsburgh Pirates a few years ago. He flopped in rookie ball. Seems to have more success with the pigskin as he gets selected to replace Dennis Pitta on the offense. If there's one thing Joe Flacco loves, it's his tight ends. Prepare yourselves for more insatiable gobs of four-yard passing plays, Baltimore. It's just what you needed. The Atlanta Falcons select... Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley, welcome to the definition of insanity. Soon enough, the word failure will be as numb and unfeeling as the disappointment that the Falcons bring to their fans. This guy should ease that pain and pair well with Julio Jones and... Oh. Oh, dear. The Seattle Seahawks select Rashad Penny. You did what? You drafted a fucking running back, Seattle? This is like putting a band-aid on a gangrenous wound. Have you not been paying attention to how your defense has been gutted and torn to pieces? Have you seen how terrible your line play has been? This is a pick that is so out of touch with reality that it's not even funny. I don't care if you drafted football's version of Big Boss to pair with his brother, you're still screwed. Have fun watching Russell Wilson scramble for his life on every third play. Idiots. The Pittsburgh Steelers select Terrell Edmonds. Oh yay, another safety with that wonderful versatile that the Steelers brass fawns on and on about. If he flops, this means that he can suck at three positions instead of one. Lucky for us, they picked the physically skilled guy that has issues with play recognition and wasn't supposed to be drafted until the third round. He also got this news while he was taking a shit. Impeccable. Add to this that they didn't draft any inside linebackers and we've got some concern here. At least the Steelers got that pass-happy wide receiver and quarterback combo from Oklahoma City. They know how to dominate at Heinz Field, so that's always a plus. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Taven Bryan. Saxonville bolstering that D for the future with another lineman to give offenses a living hell. He can spend a few years developing in the shadows while everyone else eats quarterbacks for breakfast. We'll reopen this case in a few years. The Minnesota Vikings select Mike Hughes. Congratulations, Mr. Hughes. You get to eventually replace a fossil in Terrence Newman as your career is highlighted by painful disappointments in January. Enjoy your misery, sir. The New England Patriots select Sony Michelle. New England drafting a running back in the first round? Guess they really wanted a headline guy instead of that patented running back by committee. He will probably be lost in the shuffle sometime in November. Belichick always loves playing the hot hand. The Baltimore Ravens select... Lamar Jackson. There it, there it is. Baltimore finally making a bold move and potentially selecting their heir apparent to the elite Joe Flacco. Think of the possibilities. Instead of three yard passes to the tight end, it could be eight yard passes. They could execute quarterback draw plays for God's sake. I'm afraid of these new opportunities for the Ravens. I prefer my division rivals offense boring and predictable. And there lies the first round of the draft. I look forward to this aging poorly by the end of next season.
from South Dakota State. Go Birds! <laughs>